I've been getting a lot of DMs around the fact that how I exactly prepared for my system design rounds. First of all, in this particular video, I'll be majorly talking about a lot of concepts and it seems like a never ending topic altogether. The first thing that you should try to do is try to figure out a basic roadmap. What are the situations when things are actually impacted in? A lot of people actually make a mistake that they try to tell a lot of requirements and eventually they are only able to discuss one or two of them. So mock interviews can be really helpful in that particular aspect. There is a very famous problem around designing a key value store. Now, one last strategy that I actually followed. This is going to give you a lot of confidence. So recently I posted a video on my channel where I mentioned about the fact that I'll be joining Meta as a software engineer. And since then I've been getting a lot of DMs around the fact that how I exactly prepared for my system design rounds, not just for Meta, but all the other companies that I interviewed with. So to be very honest, uh, there was not a company specific strategy that I actually followed. And I was more holistically preparing for all the upcoming system design rounds and to be very honest this preparation strategy actually i followed not this time but similar strategy i followed earlier as well so in this particular video i'm going to keep uh, i'm going to talk about a brief overview of my strategy that what exactly i did how exactly i approached um, the preparation so that i can actually excel in the system design rounds so without any further ado, let's just start. But before starting the video, if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, please do consider subscribing because we are going to put some really cause awesome content coming up ahead. So let's just start. So before moving forward in the video, I would like to talk about the new system design 2.0 cohort that we have recently launched. If you are somebody who is actually willing to apply for a lot of product based companies and you are technically confused on where to actually prepare for low level design, high level design and machine coding rounds, then you are actually at the right place. In the new system design cohort, we are going to actually include all the relevant concepts around high level design, low level design, machine coding. And this time we have kept it kind of like bigger and better. This time we have specifically added a lot of company specific interview problems solving both in HLD and LLD. We have added interesting concepts around distributed system like Lampot clock, vector clock, consensus algorithms and whatnot. The complete curriculum of this system design 2.0 cohort is mentioned in the link in the description section below. You can use this coupon code coming on your screen to get massive discounts altogether. There is a dedicated video on the channel where you can find all the details regarding the course syllabus. But what I can assure you is based on my experience working as a software engineer and all of the interviews that I have given, this is going to be a very comprehensive course where we are going to talk about all the relevant things that is going to be necessary, not just for you to crack software engineer interviews, but also work as a software engineer. So do check out all the links in the description section below. Uh, all the course syllabus, all the dates, everything necessary is already mentioned there. So now let's come back to the video. So first of all, in this particular video, I'll be majorly talking about the high level design uh, aspect of the things because I believe that people find the high level design aspect a bit more overwhelming because there are a lot of concepts and it seems like a never ending topic altogether, right? So now see, first of all, you have to understand that learning high level design overall is going to not just help you in software engineering interviews, but even your day to day software engineering work that is also get improved a lot if you know the high level design concepts. Right. For example, there is a concept called as idempotency, right? Now, I first read about the idempotency concept when I was kind of like learning system design for interviews. But interestingly, when I was actually working at Google, there were a couple of flows that I got introduced with where the concepts of idempotency and idempotency keys were actually introduced to me. So in a nutshell, at that point of time, I was not like, okay, what is idempotency, right? I was actually already aware about the concept at that point of time. So overall, my point being that First of all, you have to start considering the fact that if you are preparing for a software engineering interview, specifically the high level design, then it's not like it's going to be just useful for the interviews and it is going to actually help you in your day to day work as well. So kind of like it's like a double benefit for you. Now, the first thing that you should try to do is try to figure out a basic roadmap, right? That's the similar thing I did. So what I was able to actually get a basic idea on that there are a few concepts that you should know in order to get your basics of system design sorted, right? If you know all of these basic things, then you can start taking a deeper dive into more interesting case studies and interview specific problems, right? Now, what are these particular topics? So the first and the foremost topic is 
all the basic i would say latency and throughput related concepts right that what latency is what throughput is why do you need one when exactly things are actually impacted in terms of latency what are the situations when things are actually impacted in terms of throughput you can try to understand some case studies that okay what happened in which particular scenario which actually actually reduced the latency altogether right the second very important concepts are databases if you ask me then a lot of deep dives in a lot of system design interviews are actually going to go into the database aspect of the things now interestingly if you are working with a startup you will get a lot of opportunity to actually explore a lot of interesting design and some interesting scaling strategies for databases as well so that learning you can derive from there but overall how exactly you can scale your database how you can actually make sure that the data that you are storing the data that you are retrieving all of that is going to work well on scale this is something that is very important and i believe database related concepts can be a bit tricky as well so if you actually understand whatever are the set of concepts and where exactly to apply them they are going to be really very useful the third and the very important concepts were around calculations some basic calculation that you also do in your day to day work in order to understand the scope and the requirement of the complete set of project is something that is very useful in system design interviews as well now there were a few miscellaneous concepts regarding let's say caching strategies cdns requirement analysis right so that you can actually do things fairly including other very basic concepts like microservices and monolith what are load balancers and so on so this basic road map i actually tried to figure out first of all that what are some of the basic things that i have to actually learn this actually gave me a fair idea that okay these are some things that definitely at least we have to do these are those concepts that you cannot actually miss and most of the time your system design interviews are not going to go well if you lack any depth around these so this was the first step that i actually did now the second very important thing was to understand requirement analysis now see system design interviews are either let's say a 45 minute or a 1 hour interview you cannot actually make a complete end to end application in 1 hour you need to know what are the set of requirements that you should actually propose that you will be able to actually solve during those 45 minutes or 1 hour a lot of people actually make a mistake that they try to tell a lot of requirements and eventually they are only able to discuss one or two of them so this actually shows your skill as a software engineer that how good scoping of work you are able to do if you are not able to scope up your work well then definitely it's not a very good sign altogether so what i try to do was i try to actually read a lot of problems and try to understand that okay what exactly is the requirement that they are trying to solve and even in the requirement i believe in any system design interview there are two steps first is the basic design that you lay out should actually suffice all the functional requirement that means a basic user flow should work like if you have just like 100 users on the platform no scale as such all those 100 users should be able to do everything that you have listed down in the functional requirement this should be like the basic step of your system design aspect the second aspect that is a non functional requirement comes once you have done all the functional requirements ready right so you need to make sure that you understand the division between your design with respect to the functional and non functional requirements that once your basic flow is ready now you can start scaling up things you can try to figure out what can be some choke points what can be some bottlenecks in your design that can uh, like i would say become a hindrance in actually scaling your system altogether and i would say this practice can come up with two things first try to read as many problems as possible try to see what a particular problem what kind of requirement a particular problem is solving also the second thing that you can actually do is try to give some mock interviews if you know how to manage your clock well during an interview it is going to really help you to actually manage everything because system design interviews are kind of like very structured right you have to first of all try to figure out some functional requirements that gives you a good idea about how the engineer is going to do the scoping and how product aspect of the engineer is going on then you devise the non functional requirements to understand the core engineering concepts then you try to do some estimation to see what scale you are going going to be probably tackling this estimation can come up after the basic design then you do a basic system design and then you start going deeper into the system so it's pretty much structured if you actually see it like that so giving mock interviews can be really very helpful right and i believe i have seen a lot of people 
who actually know a lot of concepts but when they actually when whenever you are going to actually ask a question to them they are not able to structure things well so mock interviews can actually also help you to structure up things very well in order to ensure that okay whatever you are trying to actually i would say um, think whatever problems and whatever solutions of the system you are able to think you are able to properly tell them to the interviewer in a more structured way so mock interviews can be really helpful in that particular aspect and this was kind of like my second strategy that i wanted to make sure that i don't overcommit in the requirement analysis and then under deliver i wanted to be kind of like to to the point and make sure that whatever discussion we do we are able to finally do the solutioning for that now what i believe is a very important aspect in a system design interview should be that as a candidate you should try to drive the complete discussion as much as possible and in order to make sure that you drive the discussion as much as possible you should know the structure that what flow you are going to take see some problems are there for which for example estimations you can do prior but for some problems unless you have a basic design ready you won't be able to think about the estimations properly so this was something that i practiced a lot with uh, all the set of problems that i was actually practicing that i try to understand that okay i am going to go with a very specific flow and i try to do a lot of time boxing that okay i should not spend more than x amount of time in the requirement analysis y amount of time in the estimation calculations z amount of time with the basic design and so on this and all of this time boxing i kept one thing in mind that there will be some follow up questions from the interviewer side also so we have to keep a buffer of that and see to be very honest you have to keep one thing in mind that there might be some situations where let's say immediately you are not able to come up with some solution so at least try to think about trade offs that okay if we want to do something maybe we'll lose something and gain something at least this much kind this kind of like an approach should be there so that you can manage things well and you don't get stuck during the interview so managing how you are going to structure and how you are going to drive the interview is going to be a lot more helpful altogether now some system design interviews can be specifically a bit hard than others depending on what complexity of problems they actually ask so for this i made sure that i actually learn some of the bit of more advanced concepts around let's say distributed systems that how exactly vector clock and lamport clock works right how exactly there are data consistency issues in distributed system what are some different different type of consistency patterns right what exactly uh, crdt is what are the different different types of crdts and so on a lot of these advanced concept specifically to be very honest solve one very small and specific aspect of a very big system but keeping these concepts handy can be great because at some point of time let's say whenever the deep dive discussions are going to happen in an interview these are going to actually show your skill as a software engineer that you also know some deeper aspects of the systems and in order to understand these concept there are a lot of interesting resources that you can follow for example you can read the book of De designing the data intensive application from martin klepman they also have a uh, i would say youtube uh, playlist you can also watch that uh, whatever is your convenience and you can try to understand all of these concepts right they are going to actually uh, give you a lot more breadth in whatever is your understanding of each and every system and apart from that what i did was i tried to read a lot of case studies for example there is a very famous problem around designing a key value store now one way of learning the system design of a key value store is just going through the already available and existing solutions on different websites youtubes and courses but another way would be that maybe you can try to find maybe some actual engineering article from some company who have actually designed a key value store for example there is a very interesting article on zpdb by meta where they actually decipher everything that you need to know if you want to let's say de device a new key value store from scratch and you want to design a system around that that article of course is not written in a way that you are going to prepare for a system design interview but that article is written in a way that you understand deep internal concepts of the system so that you see as an application driven way what exactly is expected to be done for a key value store so this should be your approach you should not just learn with respect to interviews you should try to take deeper dive and see if this concept is there where exactly you can actually apply this is going to be really very helpful now one last strategy that i actually followed was the fact that what i realized that not every system design problem is a new problem for example you can actually club a set of problems together and figure out a common pattern across them for example food delivery applications or something like uber 
or something like Tinder. All of these are proximity service. That means you have to figure out something which is present nearby. Now that data might be moving, might be static. Based on that, your solutions is gonna actually change. But I would say the core meaty concept of the topic is gonna lie common across all of these problems. So what I did was I tried to make sure that I'm able to club a lot of concepts together. Now, for example, if you see leaderboard, now the problem of leaderboard can be a smaller problem for a lot of different different type of problems. So this can be something that can be used. For example, in lead code also, you can have a leaderboard, right? In a gaming contest also, you can have a leaderboard and the concepts of leaderboard, you can eventually also try to apply at some level in heavy hitters, right? If you want to find the top K of something, you can apply similar concepts there. So this kind of grouping and pattern matching I actually did in order to make sure that I don't feel every new problem is a new concept altogether and I have to read things from scratch. This actually saved a lot of time and gave me a lot of confidence that, okay, I know a lot of things and I will be able to design things new. Also, one last thing that I would recommend everybody is that always make sure that you are not learning system design problems in a way that you have to just rote learn everything and you have to just keep the diagram in your mind. Assume that you are a software engineer, you are doing good and if given a problem, you will be able to devise a proper solution around that. It's not like you have to just rote learn everything and just tell in the exam. It's like when given a problem, try to decipher as if a real software engineer is going to decipher a problem in the work, just a bit on, I would say, high level overview and in short amount of time. This is going to give you a lot of confidence and uh, do make sure that you give a lot of mock interviews. If you do these things well, trust me on this, you are going to do extremely well in system design. Don't go into the hassle of like learning from n number of topics uh, or I would say n number of resources. Take one or two good resources and finish them end to end and then only move to the next one. Try to give as many interviews as possible so that you can get the same feeling of and the same rush of actual system design interview. So these were all of those things that I actually ensured and these were kind of like some things that I believe are going to be really very helpful in case you are also preparing for a system design interview. That being said, let's wrap this particular video here and if you have any questions, do drop them in the comment section below. I would be really happy to answer all of them. Till then, take care. Bye-bye. I am Sanket Singh, signing off.